So we keep on looking for ways we can improve our cycles. So we reheated it last time. Now let's talk about regeneration. So the first part of the heat addition process and boiler takes place at pretty low temperatures. And that is happening down here. So when I'm going from process two to two prime, this is still really low temperature heat addition. Remember our efficiency is based on the temperature where we add heat and the temperature where we reject heat. And so we're always trying to make sure we are adding heat at as high a temperature as possible. And this is just a bad thing for us because our average temperature is between these two values. If we could change that, it would make things a lot better for us. If we can make it so it was between these two values instead, our average temperature is much higher and our efficiency would be much higher. Now, in a steam power plant, they're very complex and we can have steam that's extracted at various points. Now, if I extract it at different points, it might not do work, but what I can do is I can use that steam to heat the water that I will be heating use my boiler. So I can use this steam to preheat my water. And this is a, term, just a form of regeneration, which in the case of a um, steam power plant, we call a feed water heater. Now, a feed water heater is just simply a, a heat exchanger, just like we had in our um, gas power cycles. But there's two different types. One is called an open feed water heater, and one is a closed feed water heater. It just depends on do the waters mix as they do in an open feed water heater, or do they stay separate as they do in a closed feed water heater. Each of those has their own pros and cons. So let's go ahead and look at those right now. Let's look at those and see what they are. So first off, open feed water heaters. So open means direct contact. I have steam and liquid that are mixing at the same time, okay? Steam and liquid at the same time, which are hopefully going to bring it to being a saturated liquid by doing that. Might look something like the following. So I have a turbine, and you can see that some of the steam is leaving that turbine early, and the rest of it's getting condensed just as normal. Now that steam that is leaving goes into this open feed water heater, and it mixes together with the subcooled liquid from the pump. And when it comes out, it's hopefully going to be a saturated liquid. So that's what's happening right here. Now, one issue we have when we do this is that when it becomes a saturated liquid, it might not be at the pressure we need it to be. And so we have to then pump it again to get it to the pressure it needs to be for the boiler. But by doing that, I go from having an, um, an average temperature that's somewhere between these two values to somewhere between these two values. So I have increased my average temperature for heat addition, and that's really gonna improve my efficiency. Now for a closed feed water heater, the two feed water streams don't touch. We have two pipes that are near each other, maybe wrapped around each other, but they never directly touch. So they don't mix. That's a closed feed water heater. Closed means does not mix. And it would look something like this. So similar to last time, my turbine still has steam being taken at two different points. One gets expanded part of the way, does a little bit of work, and then leaves to go to the closed feed leaves to go to the closed feed water heater, and then the rest of it goes all the way through and produces as much power as possible and goes into the condenser. So, in the case of a closed feed water heater, I have it right here, and what's happening is my steam in this case is hopefully going to turn into a saturated liquid, and my compressed liquid is also hopefully turning into a saturated liquid for points nine and point three. Regardless, we take these two streams of liquid, so both are now liquid, so this is liquid right here, and this is liquid right here, and we then mix them together before they go into the boiler. So in doing this, we're once again raising the average temperature at which we add heat, and by doing that, we are increasing our efficiency. So that is the goal here. We're trying to increase our efficiency. If you're wondering, do you have to use one or the other? Well, the answer is you can use both, okay? You can use both. 
I've got an open feed water heater here, a closed feed water heater here. Um, why would you use either one? Well, first off, closed feed water heaters are more complex, okay? Because you've got all these tubes that are being connected to each other. Also, heat transfer is typically less effective for a closed feed water heater because it's all through radiation. You can't put the two in direct contact. Now, open feed water heaters are simple, they're inexpensive, they've got good heat transfer characteristics. However, for each open feed water heater, you have to have a pump to get it to the right pressure for your boiler or for the next step. So you can use some combination of the two, like it doesn't have to be one or the other. And most steam power plants are using a combination of these. Now, luckily for us, for the problems I'm gonna make you do, I'm not gonna make you deal with a bunch of combinations of these. Though that would be a really good problem. We'll be dealing with either one or the other, either open or closed, and I'll be teaching you how to solve those. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.